Mmm, extra shot today. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Heather and as always I'm reading with a vengeance and I hope you are as well. How's everybody doing? How's everybody's reading so far this year? It's my first wrap up of the year and I am really happy to say that reading is going very well. Not quantity, but that's not really what's important, is it? I have read some really good books and the very first book that I finished in 2023 was a five star. Not gonna lie, I set it up that way. I had a pretty good idea that the book that I set myself up to read first of the year was going to be a five star. So I kind of set it up that way. And I would recommend everybody do that. If you want to start off a year or start off a month or start off any kind of reading journey, pick something that you absolutely would bet on is going to be a five star because that's the way to start it. <laughs> you know, I have to say, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do a mid-month wrap up because stuff's going on around here. I think probably by the next video, I'll be able to share with you where we're going. We ha I have a pretty good idea where we're going now, but just to be sure, I'm going to wait until we're absolutely sure where we're going. And so I think next video, I'll be able to tell you, but I'm super excited about it and I'm dying to tell you right now, but I'm going to hold off. So things are happening. You know, we are on the cusp of picking up and moving, but I was able to steal a few minutes, so I want to sit down here and talk to you about the books that I've read so far in the month of January of 2023. So let's just start off with the bang. I always go in chronological order anyways, but you must be dying to know what is my five-star read of the month, and that is A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. I have been dying to read this since I finished A, a Psalm for the Wild Built last year, and I finally got my hands on it, and this is one of those books that I am going to hold on to. And as a matter of fact, when I read A Psalm for the Wild Built, it was a library book. So of course, I ended up having to return it. But I love that book so much. And I love this one so much that I'm probably going to buy myself a copy. I've been looking for it and I can't, I can't find it. I've been to three different bookstores. I'll probably have to order it on Amazon. It's no big deal. First world troubles. But this duology is definitely going to be a set that I own and keep because if I were a rereader, I would definitely reread these. And they're so short, super easy um, to reread. And they're just so beautiful. If you are one of the handful that hasn't read either one of these books yet, get your hands on them because it's not a book where, oh, if you love sci-fi, you'll love this. Or if you love fantasy, you'll love this. Or if you love this, or if you love that. No, if you read words on a page, you will love these books. The story is just so beautiful. I, as a matter of fact, the review that I put in my Goodreads was it's a hug between covers. It's just so, it's a hug. Everybody has talked about A Psalm for the Wild Build, so I won't go too deeply into it. So in our future, robots have kind of taken over and done everything for us. But then this world takes place place in a world even future than that where the robots have become uh, sentient beings and they've decided to abandon humans and go off on their own and live on their own and leave the humans to their own devices. So A Psalm for the Wild Built uh, takes place after that's happened and you follow Dex who is a uh, binary tea monk and what they do is they go around and basically they're a traveling therapist and they make tea and they chat with people who need to chat and to feel better. And uh, that's what Dex does. And But Dex is unfulfilled. And so Dex goes on kind of a journey out into the wilderness to find themselves. Dex comes across a robot whose name is Mosscap. And Mosscap has been sent by all the robots to check to see how the humans are doing. And so Dex and Mosscap kind of continue on this journey and they talk about what it is to be a human. In And it's seen through kind of the eyes of a robot. So you're explaining to somebody who just has no idea about humans, uh, what humans are about, why they do the things they do, and it's beautiful. That's where A Psalm for the Wild Built starts off. And then this 
uh, story just kind of continues that story. And it's just as beautiful. It's just as good. It is, if it, if this only ends up being a duology, if there's no more in this series, uh, I'm fine with it. I would love for there to be another one. I would love to continue on with Dex and Mosscap's story, but I don't feel like I'm hanging on a thread to find out what happens next. I'm perfectly satisfied with the duology and uh, I absolutely love this five stars all the way. Highly recommend. Please get your hands on a Psalm for the wild built. You won't be disappointed. And I absolutely love this cover and it's going to look gorgeous on my shelf. The next book I read is your house will pay by Steph Cha. This is a, I would say it's historical fiction slash suspense. I don't remember how I came across this book and I have not heard anybody else talk about it. Now, I only started watching BookTube maybe a year and a half ago. And this book came out, I believe, in 2019. Yeah, this book came out in 2019. And I don't remember seeing it anywhere. I haven't seen anybody talk about this. And it's one of those books that I feel would be talked a lot about. So what it's about. This follows... Uh, two families in two timelines. The first timeline is in 1991-92, right around the Rodney King beating in Los Angeles. Racial tensions are high. And then the second timeline is present day. And I think in this book, it's like 2018-ish. You're following two families, a Black family and a Korean family. And the racial tension between uh, Blacks and Koreans super high. It's been going on since way back in the early 70s uh, when the Koreans came to Los Angeles and started kind of becoming successful business owners. They run a lot of the convenience stores and grocery stores and uh, the black community felt like they were shutting the black community out. They wouldn't hire blacks in their stores. So the black uh, family, you are following mostly Sean. In the 90s, he is a young teenager super close with his sister. His sister ends up getting killed. Uh, and you find out that the Korean community has something to do with that. And I don't want to give too much away. And then in the present day, Sean has a family of his own and his cousin, Ray, who has been in prison, is released from prison. And Sean is trying to help him navigate life outside of prison. Then the Korean family you're following, you're following mostly Grace. And she is a young woman in her late 20s. She's super close with her sister, Miriam. Uh, but Miriam has distanced herself from her parents. She's not t spoken to her parents in over a year. And Grace doesn't know why. And then a secret comes out about something that happened years ago about Grace's family. And you understand where Sean's family and Grace's family are connected. It sounds like what I just said was super, super vague. <laughs> this book addresses the racial tensions in Los Angeles so well, and it does it without being heavy handed or in your face of how this is how you should behave. It addresses the nuances of just the day to day life and how the tensions in these communities affect individuals. I will say also, I found out uh, after the fact, of course, after I read a book that I really, really love, I kind of do a deep dive into the author and where they came up with. And it turns out that this story is based on a, an actual uh, event that happened in Los Angeles in 1992. A young woman, Latasha Harris, a teenager, I think she was 15, uh, was shot and killed by a Korean store owner and the store owner never served any jail time. So there's a little bit of that that happens in this book. I talked recently about a book that was based on real events and that book got uh, poor reviews because some people thought that, oh, it was incendiary where a lot of people didn't like how the book Incendiary was about the 9-11 terrorist attack without being about 9-11 terrorist attack. It was about a different terrorist attack. And I don't know, reviewers felt like that author kind of stole from the real event. And I disagree. I like 
Like I would have never heard about Latasha Harris had I not read the story. So I like when authors take a real event and then create a fictional story based on a real event. It gives perspective and it gives that real story more life. It gets that real story out there for people to hear about it. I like that. Anyway, if I didn't mention it before, I listened to this. It was a really good audiobook. I felt it was very well written. I I was connected to all of the characters. I cared about their stories. I cared about how they were connected to each other. And I got choked up at the end. Uh, it, it really drew out some emotion in me. And I just, I love a story that deals with this type of topic. These are hard hitting topics that just are relevant. They continue to be relevant. Highly recommend this book. I gave this four and a half stars, really loved it. And I think you will too. The next book I read in the month of January is The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn. This is historical fiction and it actually also uh, follows the real, a real life person, uh, Mila. What's her last name? How do you pronounce that? Pavlichenko. Mila Pavlichenko was a, an actual Soviet woman who ended up serving in the Red Army as a sniper. And she actually became quite notorious as a sniper with over 300 confirmed kills. So this takes place uh, right at the beginning of World War II. This is when uh, the Soviets were invaded by the Nazis. Mila is a very, very young woman who, for the most part, she's a single woman. She's married, but her much older husband is kind of a turd and he has abandoned her and her young son. So she's a single one, a uh, single mother. Uh, when shit starts to hit the fan with the Nazis, she signs up to join the army for reasons. She ends up becoming a sniper and she becomes a very successful one. And this talks about her life as a female in the red army, as a successful sniper, a leader in the army. She becomes so famous and well-known in Russia she is sent by the leaders in the army to America to do kind of a goodwill tour for a couple of reasons, but primarily they want the, they want America's help in the fight against the Nazis. And they kind of send Mila over there to endear the American people to Russians. And Mila becomes friends with Eleanor Roosevelt and which that is actually a true story. Uh, but of course you get Kate Quinn's, take on the dialogue and the budding friendship between the two, which I enjoyed very much. So yeah, I, um, I love historical fiction. I specifically love historical fiction that takes place around World War II. So I enjoyed that this very much. I, I actually got this. This is a, an arc that I picked up at a brews and books event that I did went to last summer where everybody who attended got a free book, but they were all arcs, which is fine. I will say there is a lot of war activity. Whereas when I read historical fiction, I'll give you an example. One of my very favorite, one of my all time favorite historical fictions uh, ba based in World War II is The Nightingale. And yes, you do read a lot about what actually is happening in the war, but the core of the story is the relationship between the two sisters and, and their lives, their personal lives, and how they are making their way through World War II. And you get that from Mila as well, but there's a lot of war activity and strategy and, I don't know, the life of a sniper and what makes a successful sniper. So I could have used a little bit less of that, but I did enjoy this book. It was, and the whole thing was, well, mostly, most of it was from Mila's point of view with a smattering of like notes taken by Eleanor Roosevelt on her perspective, as far as her meeting Mila. Um, and then there's something else going on when Mila goes to America, she's being stalked. I won't go too far into that storyline, but that's an additional somewhat secondary storyline that's going on. There's also an author's note at the end uh, where Kate talks about how she came up with the story and what is real and what she added to the story, which I appreciated. Uh, so, but yes, I'm glad I read this book. I will read, I haven't read The Rose Code yet, but I, it's on my TBR. 
I do like her writing. I felt like I was connected to Mila, which is, of course, super important uh, to me when I read a book. So would I recommend this? Absolutely. I gave this three and a half stars. The next book I read was Wash Day Diaries by Jamila Rouser and Robin Smith. This is a graphic novel. Now, I know that this was that I'm not the target audience for this book, but I have to say it doesn't matter. This is a story of four best friends. They are young black women and they each are so very, very different, but they come together and they just love each other. But the graphic novel is split up into the four sections and each of the sections follows each of the girls on kind of a slice of life. And each of the story kind of uses each of their individual hair routines as a window into their individual lives. And I think it's meant to tell that story to kind of connect to Black women everywhere. And it's meant to be relatable in that way. But really at its core, this graphic novel is a story about the friendship between these women and how they are there for each other no matter what. And I absolutely connected to that. I absolutely love this story. I love this graphic novel. I don't have the physical copy. I uh, checked it out from the library. I didn't seek it out. I just happened to see it on the library shelves. And I've heard other people talk about it. But when I saw it on the shelf, I couldn't help but grab it. It's beautiful. I'll have the cover up here. But I'm also going to pop in some pictures of some of my favorite pages that I thought were really beautiful. The color palette in this story was just gorgeous. There's one picture I'll probably put up in here of a woman who has just come out of the salon after she's had her hair braided and she just the joy on her face. I just absolutely love this picture. So I wanted to share that with you. Each of the different girls gets their own individual color palette. You know, I think there's one who gets a yellow color palette and then there's pink and then there's blue and and yeah, I felt connected to all four of these young women and I wanted to know what happens the next day. I wanted to know what happens in the rest of their lives. I enjoyed this so much. If you like graphic novels, even if you don't, um, it just, I read this in one sitting. It just put a smile on my face. I gave this four stars. And finally, the last book that I read in the first half of January is Us Against You by Frederick Backman. I got this from the library. I hadn't planned on reading this this soon. I only just recently added it to my TBR. I read Bear Town, I want to say last summer, and I really, I really loved it. But the reason that this got moved up on my last TBR video, I, I don't know, I did a spin where I was going to pick the book that was the most recent recently added to my TBR, and it happened to be this one. But I'm glad I did read this because... I love Frederick Backman's writing so much. I just do. He's got such a unique writing style. This is one of those authors where you put one of his stories in front of you, you start reading his stories and you don't know it's Frederick Backman, but you start reading it. It's like you can recognize his writing without knowing it's him. So this is the second, if I haven't mentioned, this is the second in the Bear Town. I want to say it's a trilogy. It follows where Beartown, Beartown left off maybe a few months later. Beartown is a small town in Norway, I believe. And it is a very close-knit town. Everybody knows everybody. And hockey is everything to this town. And everybody's kind of connected through hockey. This hockey team is made up of teenagers, basically. 18, 17 and 18-year-olds, mostly. There's a party where... Kevin and all the hockey players are. And then the daughter of, I think, the general manager of the hockey team, Maya, she's at this party too. Maya gets raped. The town is split because she accuses Kevin of raping her. Kevin, of course, is the star, the darling of the, the town because he's the star of the hockey team. And so this rape splits the, team, the town down the middle. You know, who believes Kevin? Who believes Maya? And it's, it's more than that also because the people are connected in this town in so many different ways. Frederick Backman just, he introduces you to a character that not, is not necessarily a main character, but within a paragraph or two, you are connected to this character and you care about this character. And he does that with all of his characters. And it's just, ah, 
Anyway, so that story is resolved in Beartown. This book carries on where Beartown left off. And there's a new drama uh, in this one that is dealt with that has to do with the hockey team, but basically just involves everybody in the town. This is the second book in this video that is a second in the series. And so I can't really say a whole lot, although this is very, se this is separate. Do you know what I would say? That you could actually read this one without reading Bear Town because it alludes to the things that happen in Bear Town. I would say if you plan on reading Bear Town, don't read this one first. But if you had no interest in reading Bear Town, you could read this and enjoy it because you find out what happened in Bear Town in this one. And then it just it deals with a whole different story in here. But you don't know right away what that is, so I'm not going to tell you because of spoilers. But I, I love this. One of the things that I like about how he writes his books is um, the chapters are short, and each chapter ends in a way, it's almost like a cliffhanger on, on every chapter. Not a, a terribly dramatic cliffhanger, but you can't help but want to keep reading and want to keep reading. And another thing I like about his writing is he has a way of writing relationships not not just significant relationships but just how people humans interact with each other and how the very smallest things can have the biggest sentiments and or or you don't have to shout to relay super impactful emotions he just does those things just so brilliantly you just find yourself just loving the characters in these books even the characters and that's a big theme in here is about bad people doing good things and good people doing bad things and how the best intentions you know pave the way to hell and all of that loyalty and how loyalty can get you into big big trouble <laughs> you know doing the things for the best reasons and it creating even more problems frederick backman just does those themes and topics so well. I did. I love this book and I will be reading the winners who knows when, but yeah, a really, really good follow-up to Bear Town. I gave this four stars. So that is it. Those are the books that I read in the first half of January. And I feel like this video was a little chaotic. I had two books that were second in a series, so I couldn't say much about. So I apologize for that. But I feel really good about the books that I've read so far. They were all highly rated. I enjoyed them so much. They were super diverse, I felt. I'm pretty happy about that. Have you read any of these books? And if so, what are your thoughts on these books? Or what are the books that you have started your year off with? I'd love to hear about them. And do you have a favorite so far for the month of January? I would love to hear about them. Please feel free to mention it or just say hi down in the doodly do. If you're still watching at this point, please consider giving that like button a boop and a subscribe would be wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.